Hello friends and patrons, welcome to another Oh No Henry time lapse video. If you don't know what this is all about and would like to find out more information, this is the result of a 20 year old passion project um, that I'm now working on over at Patreon. You can find out more information by going to patreon.com forward slash Oh No Henry. Yes, the comics are about monsters trying to eat children and all of that fun stuff. It's also a good time to thank all my patrons over on at Patreon. Um, their support means so much. And we are getting closer, ever so slightly, <laughs> towards the publishing of the book. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And I might have a big surprise as I might be getting some additional texts and notes to accompany all of the drawings. If it comes to fruition, expect something soon over on at Patreon. Right, let's get on to the main part of the show and what we're on about it with this drawing. One of the clearest things that you're going to see in this drawing is how different it is in approach from the other two that I've shown so far. It is uh, one of my foibles that I share with quite a few um, artists, friend of mine, in that we don't tend to have a one set approach or one um, final style i know you can't see me but i'm doing vicious air quotes in the <laughs> around the word style it's um it's a very loaded word and i suppose one of these days we'll get into into what makes it so co complicated but it's um it's because i try I, my my painting teacher um, taught me to always let the needs of the artwork dictate your approach so do not come into an artwork with a particular approach a priori. It's much easier said than done. It also means that in my real life paintings, the things that I put up in galleries, um, very often my shows vary from from well from show to show, from from approach to approach, and topic and subject matter to subject matter. It means that you basically have to rebrand yourself each time, but it also allows you to walk away from a particular body um, of work. I also anecdotally know quite a few artists who get locked into a particular approach and because it's their bread and butter are feel themselves constrained towards uh, producing only one particular type of image. Now the struggle that I'd been having with um, with digital painting, a struggle that I've been working through for the last couple of years, is this this need to be neat, to be constrained by outlines and to be constrained by lines. And because it's so easy in digital painting, it lends itself so easily towards here is an outline, let's fill it in, and you end up with a very much of a paint by numbers kind of approach and that's not bad it's not to disparage anybody who does that there are some absolutely mind-blowing digital artists that work in that in, in that approach but if you come from a traditional oil or acrylic media it seems to lose some of that freshness some of that nuance of the mark making and i think it also is less fun for the viewer to look at one of the things that I really enjoy in paintings that I enjoy making in my own artworks is something that is that leaves a little to the imagination that allows the viewer to enjoy passages of light and color and to deduce their forms to deduce the passages of light to deduce what's happening and it engages not only the eye but then the brain into creating an overall image at the end of the day what you're doing in a two-dimensional work is creating shapes shapes which are two-dimensional uh, well <laughs> two-dimensional shapes and they're defined by their edges their outlines and when you're drawing and you're using just primarily lines, you tend to forget that you're actually dealing with shapes. The lines take the primary focus, and that's very much the purview that of, of drawing. That's what drawings, that's the space that drawings play in. Uh, with painting, you're actually dealing much more with the shapes themselves. The outlines becomes incidental. 
And so when I was uh, drawing and uh, familiarizing myself with digital media, I would overly focus on the outlines and ended up falling into that paint by numbers kind of mindset. And that, while was, it was effective and delivered uh, reasonable results, it was nowhere near where I wanted the image to go. Essentially, when you're creating an artwork, it's a constant battle. It's a, it's a game of chess between where you want the painting to go and where the painting itself wants to go. Now, I myself am a very reflexive uh, image maker. A lot of other people are not. They, they um, identify and they plan. They, they have a very clear idea of where they want to go. But I quite enjoy the freshness and the happy accident and seeing where the image leads me. And so this kind of very methodical approach was, was antithetical to where I wanted to be. So um, if you're like me and you enjoy rougher, more nuanced and, and bolder paintings and drawings, one of the big things that you're going to find is having to fight against this need to create lines and outlines everywhere. And, um, and it was, I'm still not there, but I'm definitely closer than, than I was with this drawing. And you'll see if you, if you purchase and support us on, on Patreon and look at all the images, you will actually see a very definite progression as I'm moving further and further away from the very structured and rigid outline fill in color kind of approach. In fact, where you'll see this particular image go, that there'll be a lot more nuance of texture and color and that's where i want to be it's a fun space to be in it for me it makes a very interesting drawing i want the viewer to spend some time lingering over passages and forms and shapes and and just enjoy the act of looking at something for its own sake i imagine the act of outlining and drawing lines to be a cerebral process, not a visual, uh, not visual adjacent process. And what I mean by that is that we tend to outline and draw around an object because our brains are trying to process what we're seeing. We compartmentalizing. Um, what the object is from what it isn't. See, the temptation of drawing an outline around the baseball glove is my brain's way of saying, this is the baseball glove and this is the bench. It is a way of compartmentalizing. The problem being is that in the real world, the light that falls on the glove and is the same light that falls on the bench. There is actually no real difference between the light affecting the two objects. Similarly, their colors are going to bleed left and right. The colors on the glove are going to affect the colors on the bench. The colors on the bench are going to affect the colors on the glove. The tones are going to be playing and interplaying with each other. Everything is a reflection of everything else. And our brains interpret this massive amount of sensory data into objects that we recognize as hand, shirt, glove, bench, grass. But it's just this messy blur in reality. And when your painting or your artwork more accurately reflects not our brain's way of interpreting reality, but what it actually is, the more natural looking at an object, looking at an artwork becomes. I know this sounds very esoteric and a lot of you may disagree with me. Of course, this is just one interpretation, but it's one of the reasons I believe that looking at the work of the Impressionists, for example, feels much more natural, much more realistic than the works of the um, super realist. A super realist photograph, we don't see like that. There is a wonderful video by Knowing Better called um, Why We Don't See in 4K, 
which discusses that very thing. We don't see in 4K. We don't see in hyper-focused, um, you know, crisp line. Our brains invent all of that. The lights bouncing around in the external world is a lot messier. And I believe that an artwork that more closely reflects that kind of messiness um, is more fun for the brain to look at. It's a fresher look to the image. Anyway, so that's the philosophical underpinning of my uh, approach to drawing, which I have been struggling with since I ever picked up a paintbrush, because I have this overwrought need to be neat and crisp. And, you know, I, I love the, I love comic books. I love, um, you know, the nice clean images. And, but it's not the way I like, I find myself drawing. It's, uh, it's very hard to explain. There are things that I like and there are things that my body and my brain want to do and they don't work together. And so it's finding a happy medium, a way forward that marries what you like and how you like to make images. And that, I think, ends up generating a style, a, I know we said to be careful around that word earlier on, but it generates a, a, an, an image making that is very clearly yours. And in fact, I'm becoming more and more comfortable with this way of working. And as such, you'll find less and less variances in approach. So who knows, uh, this may be a new way forward or it may be another dead end worthwhile exploring. So essentially, the approach that I've taken in this drawing and in the last few drawings is to not be overly precious and detailed with the outline. As you saw with the initial uh, drawing of the objects, it was rough. I didn't really go into a lot of detail, although what you didn't see in this particular video, of course, is just how many different variations of baseball gloves I drew. Those things are damn difficult to draw, uh, <laughs> and they're quite complicated little objects. Anyway, so I had to familiarize myself with baseball gloves because, of course, there are none here. That aside, the drawing was actually very simple, and it's the drawing then ends up existing on a single layer, a multiply layer, so it's still transparent to everything that's beneath it. And then I first put in a basic color, then, uh, and you'll notice now that I've started uh, employing a greater variety of brushwork. Um, so some sponges, some rakes, um, some messy oils. So I'm allowing the colors to play and bleed and interweave. Once those are laid down, then I build up my shadows with a couple more multiply layers and some overlay layers for the light. As I'm doing that, I'm slowly but surely um, reducing the opacity of the outline. So I'm relying on it less and less and less. And by this time of the drawing, of course, the, uh, the initial line drawing is gone completely. Now, this is very similar to how most people would approach an oil painting in which they would do a basic outline in chalk um, or charcoal or pencil on the canvas. And then the paint would start taking uh, primacy over the line drawing and it's something that i just could never really grasp or work myself around with the digital medium but i think i finally cracked it and i know that for a lot of people i mean i, I teach these teenagers um a drawing and these kids uh have grown up with um with drawing pads in their in their hands and they are absolutely fantastic they have more skill then by the time they're like 15 16 and i have in my many many years i think one of the uh, biggest hurdles uh, relating to this so to put it in concrete terms is that with traditional painting because you're putting on layers of paint on top of layers of paint you have no choice but in the process to erase your line drawing to erase your notes in digital drawing, you have the ability to preserve your drawing forever as a layer. And this had been the thing that had been 
hampering me and crippling me the entire time. You have this tendency to want to preserve each of your layers as this own special little thing. And because I kept on relying on the on the initial line drawing to guide the painting process, I never allowed the painting to breathe and dictate what it needed, which ended up in these quite stilted, I personally, I think, these quite stilted and um, repressed drawings, whereas I find, I feel that this one is a lot fresher in its end result. And it's doubly frustrating because this is the very thing that I I, 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 I teach my students and I'm, I, I was committing the exact same mistake. I mean, I am by no means perfect. I am far from it. Uh, I'm a mediocre artist at best, but I I understand some of the theories. And what I used to tell my, 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 my students in, in my drawing class was that there's a whole variety of mark making um, and you can't fixate on any one stage as though it must be perfect. When we're doing figure drawing, a lot of people want their initial little sketches to be perfect and presentable, but you have to remind them that no, 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 you need to drop those, you need to ignore those, you need to have a long-term vision of the end result. And because you get to keep each of your layers in your drawing in the digital medium, the temptation is so strong to preserve each stage as it is. So I've been forcing myself to slowly remove that outline and then to flatten my forms and to allow the painting and drawing to breathe, which is much more traditional in its approach. I'm not saying better, but it definitely works better for me. It's also allowed me to expand the color range you will, and expand the textures. And uh, you will see there's a, there's a lot of a varieties of colors. You'll notice some green beginning to creep into the red shirt, as it should have always been there. But I had been so um, constrained by the, uh, this is a red shirt, it needs to be red. And I, I wasn't playing quite along um, enough with the painting to let it have a life of its own. To change the subject completely, uh, some of the patrons uh, have asked me to maybe do a few shorter practical videos, uh, little how-to videos. Uh, sorry, I was just talking about teaching and it sort of reminded me. Um, I'm quite keen to do that, so you may, the, those of you, of you who follow the channel um, and those of you who support me outside the Patreon may see some new videos coming through. I'm actually quite interested in doing a little series on how to sketch. Everybody tells you that the best way to get better at drawing is to draw more and draw more often. But very often people don't tell you how to draw. You know, um, it's fine to tell you to go to the gym. But if nobody's teaching you how to keep your form and how to actually exercise properly, you're going to do yourself more harm than good. And so I think that might be something I'm going to get into pretty soon to go along with it. Uh, if you have any comments or thoughts about that, of course, uh, feel free to let me know. Right, so to get back on track, if you look at these passages that's currently being worked on here, I mean, you can see that there's some remnants of the outlines, but they're much more judiciously chosen. The, the, the coloring on the hand I'm particularly happy with, as well as the shirt. In fact, the coloring and the texturing almost everywhere in this drawing makes me uh, very happy. It suggests more than just hammers it down. It allows you, the viewer, to have a bit more fun looking over the image and letting your brain work out what it is that you're looking at. I hope that you're getting the same sensation and getting the, the getting what I'm, uh, what I want out of the drawing, because obviously once uh, once I publish it, the drawing is yours to look at. Uh, what you see is unique to you. And that's one of the reasons why I think you want a nice, broad, um, broad uh, possibility of interpretations. I know it sounds like I went on a long and rambling, meandering, pointless uh, <laughs> discussion of drawing versus painting, line versus shape, but there was purpose. I found myself, because of my own 
expectations, my own prejudice, my own biases, um, burdened by the expectation that the digital media would be crisper, cleaner, would need to look, sorry, crisper, cleaner, more detailed. And it didn't need to be, it doesn't need to be at all, of course, of course. And <laughs> I am a fool to have believed any other way, but it, such is the nature of our uh, internal biases and expectations. So when I traded the paintbrush uh, for the stylus, well, for these drawings anyway, I got locked in my own head about what it need, what I needed to output. And this journey of doing all of these uh, Ono Henry comic panels, as well as the uh, Dungeon Dragons character commissions that I do, has been a process of freeing myself to explore different um, different brushes, different modes of expression without being locked in by our expectations. And very often when we enter an artwork, and by enter an artwork, I mean when you start drawing, you start painting, or even start sculpting, we are often burdened by our expectations. And the bigger and more pressing those expectations are, the more crippling they become. I refer to that, because uh, that uh, run an art shop uh, called Art on Main in Klebecha, if any of you want to come and visit us, we're at Warmer Park. Um, but if you, and I refer to that as the, the expensive canvas uh, syndrome. Generally, the more expensive the canvas, the, the, the more uh, grand your, your expectations of making the important artwork, inverted commas, the more likely you are to screw it up. There is an inverse, uh, there is an inverse correlation between your expectations and your freedom to play and your end results. So often you'll find that you do a little doodle next to the phone while... Well, we don't really do that anymore. We tend to walk around with our phones in our hands. But when you're doodling on the phone, you will often come up with much fresher, cooler, better looking little artworks. Because your expectations are so low, you're allowing yourself freedom to play. And this has been a very important lesson over these last few months, for me anyway. And uh, through these videos, I hope for you too. At this point, there is very little left to do, but to thank you for sticking with me all this way through this video. You will notice that I am uh, working hard at making the videos shorter and shorter. I am hoping to work my way down to 12 to 15 minute time lapses, but it requires a lot more editing and a lot more, um, yeah, just a careful approach. Um, I do this on the fly. I'm still learning how to do all of this, so it takes a <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. But you'll be proud to know that we've managed to whittle our video down from 35 plus minutes to some 22, 23 minutes. So that's a quarter of an hour shaved off. Uh, hopefully, I'll find a way to shave off another 10 minutes before the next one. Again, uh, thanks to you. Uh, don't forget to leave a like or comment or whatever it is that YouTubers do. Uh, thank you to my patrons. Come over to patreon.com forward slash Ono Henry if you want to support us. And uh, thank you and speak to you soon. Goodbye, my friends.